Here we have some beautiful opal, paleo story stone face and mammoth effigies. The paleo Indians uh, enjoyed carving boulder opal, opal, every stone on the planet. Every stone on the planet, literally, and some stones we didn't even know about, like the volcanic glass that I discovered uh, after having discovered this uh, these effigies. Uh, the, but the, and they etched them. They etched the stones routinely. So we're going to see some beautiful etching on these as well. Uh, two of these come from Australia. The, this one here and this one here. This one comes from Ethiopia, as does the other fiery one over there that is beautifully etched. It's got a face looking down right now. You can kind of see the eye in the middle and the nose at the bottom. It's, it's the eye of the mammoth also facing right. But let's go to this one here first. This is an outstanding example. Uh, this comes from Lightning Ridge, Australia. And Lightning Ridge, Australia is known for their beautiful blue opal and uh, what they call black opal. But uh, it has natural holes in it. You can see the face looking right at us. Here's the eye, the eye, and the mouth down here. And the Paleo Indians made this uh, to, uh, to image that face. Because we have what we have here. This is the eye of a baby mammoth with its little a trunk appendage off to the left and its hair tuft, big hair tuft above its head, facing left with a sloping back. Just an outstanding baby mammoth image and really an, a very cool face. One eye, eye, and mouth. When we turn it this way, now we have a mature mammoth with the sweeping trunk, the big eye, and the hair tuft above the head. Then we have this as a human face eye and a very delicately carved ridge here to image the nose of that face looking up from the back of the mammoth, which is typical iconographic imagery for Paleo Story Stone face and mammoth effigies. Uh, normally we see the face looking up from the back of the mammoth. Sometimes it's looking down from the mammoth, depending on how we position the mammoth, and also sometimes it's looking forward from the mammoth, but more typically looking up from the back of the mammoth. As all of these stones have two human faces, one young and one old, and two mammoths. We just saw the young one, and this is the old, mature one. And then when we turn it over, we have another great baby mammoth image right here with this little appendage. That's its eye and then the hair tuft above the head. And when we turn it this way, now we have the sweeping trunk of the bigger, um, older mammoth. This is the eye and the hair tuft. And we have another face looking at us that way as well. But um, the Paleo Indians worked around the edges here. It's all That's all ancient workmanship. There's no modern workmanship on this piece, and it is heavily patinated. But opal is very soft and very, very easy to work because they worked, uh, you know, rose quartz crystal here and uh, volcanic glass and, and many other hard stones. Uh, but this happens to be very soft and easy to work. Then we have the other Australian opal. Oh my goodness, what a beauty this is. This is the eye of the face, that inclusion. There's the nose looking off to the left. That's the young face. Then when we have this big sweeping Romanesque nose here, we have the eye here, the big nose, and the mouth down below for the older face looking off to the right. Young face to the left, older face to the right. When we hold it this way, now we have a great mammoth image looking off, looking to the right, facing right. And we have a really cool face, this eye, and that slit there's been worked as the mouth. So we have the eye and the mouth of the face looking up from the back of the mammoth. That's all been beautifully flaked in paleo times. We turn it this way, we have a mammoth now facing left. A mammoth facing right now with that little slit its eye. And then when we go this way, that little slit becomes the eye of the young face looking off to the right and the old face looking off to the left. Just an outstanding stone, really. Beautiful, beautiful stone from Australia. And then we have just an outstanding 
This is a Ethiopian opal, and oh my God, look at the etching lines right there. I wanted to show you those. Uh, Paleo Indians etched flake stone to image the hair on the top of the heads and also the uh, mammoth hair. And that's all been etched. Now it's real easy to etch this stone, but they routinely etched obsidian. They re Now I'm talking flake stone, not round cobbles. Um, I discovered this flake stone etching. It only exists on Paleolithic artifacts. I mean, there could be a stray in an, uh, a piece that was etched in the early archaic, but it wouldn't be a mammoth effigy. It wouldn't be a face and mammoth effigy that I call story stones. This is a story stone, and, and uh, they all are here. All four of these uh, opals are paleo story stone effigies. And this, this has been etched, etched, etched. Now, they etched, like I say, obsidian. They etched volcanic glass like crazy. They etched uh, rose quartz crystal. They etched uh, citrine crystal. Look at the fiery. That, that, now that, we're going to have a face here. We have to get the eye in that face. There's an eye right up. You have to get the glimmer there. And there's an eye looking off to the left. There's the hair on top the face. Oh, oh. It's a beautiful stone from Ethiopia and just fiery and beautiful. And uh, now we have a mammoth facing right with the hair on its back, sloping back. And we turn it over this way. We have a really good face now with this, the eye, the nose and mouth down here and eye and nose and mouth on that side. So we have two good faces right there with that inclusion as the eye. And when we turn it over this way, now we have a really good face facing off to the right with this little appendage here is the nose of the face. That's a real good face image facing off uh, to the right now. And just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful opal stone that was all worked in paleo times, but I wanted to share with you the etching. Uh, this etching on flake stone is only on... You can identify a paleo piece of flake stone. If it has etching on it like this, it's paleo, guaranteed. So I, you can authenticate a piece if it has etching on it. If it's a paleo piece or thought to be and it has etching like this, it's paleo. So uh, you can pretty well authenticate pieces that way. Now we have the eye of the face and the, and the nose over here. This is another uh, piece from... Uh, Ethiopia. It's a large piece. It's all been flaked. All, all this flaking here, all that flaking there, this whole side here, was flaked in paleo times by our paleo Indian friends. And uh, now we have a face with a nose over here looking off to the left. And they probably gouged that eye out there for it. We have another, we have another one there, but this is a good mammoth image now facing right. That's a good mammoth image there facing right. And that's a better mammoth image of a baby mammoth with a little pointed trunk off to the left. Facing left. And now that baby mammoth, good image right there facing right. Excellent image right there. And you can see this is a big eye of a face right here as well. It's all been flaked out. But just a really outstanding grouping of Paleolithic story stone face and mammoth effigies. This one has been beautifully, beautifully carved just all around the perimeter. It's just a, an outstanding specimen. That's a true sculpture there from Lightning Ridge, Australia.